Okay, so let's take a look at this question here, which is an optimization problem. And it's uh, worth going over this one because in other uh, questions in this unit, um, they'll ask you some similar uh, problems in order to solve. And I'm also gonna introduce, for some of you who if you've never seen this tool, a quick way to do your own graphing and um, understand how to, how to find these shaded regions. Um, which uh, might be a little bit easier than trying to do a hand sketch, especially if, if the numbers are a little bit large or they're a little bit difficult to, uh, to plot. So first of all, we need to define what our variables are. So in this question, it's um, fairly simple. Um, we are looking at two objects here, small pictures and large pictures. So we can say, um, let X equal the number of small pictures and let y equal the number of large pictures. Okay, so this defines our parameters here. And then when the, when the question says, are there any restrictions on the variables? So the restrictions mean we're dealing with physical items. So what does that actually uh, imply? Well, that implies we have um, no negative values and the smallest, the smallest number of items that we could possibly sell um, is zero. So this would mean that X and Y are essentially the set of all numbers that are zero, one, two, three, four, et cetera. Um, to also no fractions. Um, so what do we call this set? Well, we can simply say X um, is a set notation of all whole numbers and Y is a set notation of all whole numbers. All right, so we're, we're not looking to have half of a picture, um, you know, any fraction of a picture. It's going to be discrete units um, and we could have as few as zero. So whole numbers would be the... Um, the, the restriction. So that, that will change our graph a little bit because when we do plot the graph, we're going to be plotting a continuous um, function, but we just have to bear in mind that we're only really gonna be looking at integer pieces of it. So then we need to find a system of linear equations to represent the situation. Well, we are told in the question that she uh, expects to sell at least 25 more small pictures than large pictures. So this tells us how many, the number of photos that um, we are expected to sell. And we're going to, but expects to make less than $500. So that means we're not going to make more than 500. So that's going to be a less than inequality. So one of the equations that we can get is if we know the small pictures are X and we are going to um, sell 25 more of the small ones. That means if we're comparing the two, um, we're have, we would have to add 25 to the large ones because it's going to be bigger. And we are selling at least 25 more. So that means we're going to sell at least greater than or equal to the amount that would be of sold of the large ones plus 25. So that's one of our equations. That's a count of how many photos we're going to sell. And then the second equation that we have is equal to the dollar value. So we do know from the problem that each small photo is um, $5. So the total dollar value for that would be 5x. And the larger photos are $12. So we know that the dollar value for that is 12y, 12 times the number of photos. And we are expecting to make less than 500. That means we're not going to make any more than 500, but we could make less. So it's going to be less than or equal to 500. So what we need to do is find a, an intersection for these two equations. And then we are, we'll see what further problems are being asked about whether um, we're maximizing um, the quantities or we're finding it to see if a possible quantity combination is possible to be sold. So how would we, we go around plotting this? So we could just um, work this out on a graph. 
um, and you can plot it by hand, uh, a simple X and Y graph, and then you just have to shade the appropriate regions, whether you're above or below the line. Um, but a quicker way to do that, especially once you understand the mechanics of that, is to use a tool um, like an online graphing tool. So I'm gonna switch over to one here that's accessible on the web. It's called Desmos Graphing. Um, when it loads up, what it lets you do is type in um, algebraic equations and it will plot them for you. So you can access this on the web. You can just go to desmos.com um, and you can bring up a virtual on-screen keyboard. Um, this is just a tablet version of one here. And you just simply type in the expressions as you see them. So the very first question was X. So on my on-screen keyboard, I'm gonna tap X and there are greater than or less than symbols already there. So we are gonna put in greater than Y plus 25. Okay, and then hit return. That's one of the equations. Now we don't see it yet and that's just because of the scale, but I'm gonna put in the second one, which is our uh, cost optimization one. So that's 5X plus 12Y is equal to, or sorry, not equal to, less than or equal to 500. Okay, and then so now we have um, the graphs that are plotted. Now we just can't see them yet, but there are some zoom um, keys. There's a plus and minus key there, so you can click on that with your mouse and bring it back, or you can tap the home key and it'll kind of uh, show it for you. And then once you get the graphs into view, you can then slide and pan them over. Now the area that we're interested in is where they just overlap. So this is showing us what all the possible combinations are um, for plotting those two lines, including things that go below zero. So we aren't really interested in that, but what we're interested in is just the area where those two zones overlap. So one of the, it's, a, it's just a similar triangle, small triangle, and if you tap the, the points on the line, it'll tell you that this is intersecting the x-axis here at 25 comma zero. Okay, it's also crossing at around 47 and 22. Now there is a fraction there. Now remember, we're only interested in um, increments of, of whole numbers. And then the farthest regions of that, of that curve is just at the end here, which is at 100. So let's see if I can bring, I can't bring them back all together there. So those three points shade or confine the boundary where these two points intersect. Okay, so if I quickly just jump back to my question here. Um, we have plotted C, so I'm just gonna put here plot um, using Desmos, okay, which is a really good tool to investigate, especially if you're doing math. So that's what we've done. Um, so question four, we finished. And then question C says, use your graph to determine if Layla could have sold 50 small and 20 large photos. So is it possible to have sold those um, in, in, those conf in those regions? So what we need to do is, like, is just ask, where um, is this point? Okay, and this point is in the intersection of those two areas. If it is, then it's true. If it's not, then it's false. So 50 small and 20 large. Okay, so we know X is the small amount, so I'm just gonna go back to Desmos here. And if you zoom in um, carefully here, and you look where 50 is, that's the X axis. And then if we go up, we see that 20 on the Y axis, you can just see it off to the left there. That point would actually fall just below um, the, the, the line right here. So it's actually just inside 50 and 20. So the answer would be yes. Um, this combination is possible. All right, so this is a quick way to do uh, an optimization problem um, where we really, instead of spending so much time plotting the graph, we can use a mathematical tool to help us um, create and look at the model and then, and then allow us to analyze and answer questions based on that. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful. Um, I encourage you to use this graphing tool for other questions um, because once you understand how to plot the points, 
and plot a, a basic graph. Um, you want to take advantage of using some other tools to help you um, get to answers more quickly and also to do some more in-depth analysis. Plus it's also a little bit more precise when you start to look at um, these questions and you might need to plot some, some values that are just a little bit hard to see on a, on a paper graph.